Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Pat McCrory, Governor of North Carolina. Uh, by the way, I just got off the phone with Nikki Haley. I've also had conversation with the President yesterday and also with Rick Scott, the Governor of uh, Florida yesterday, where we're all trying to help each other. I hope to be in touch with Governor Deal in Georgia later on today, but our, our crews among each state is working with each other. And I'm very pleased with the teamwork between North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Of course, our prayers are right now with the people of Florida as the storm is hitting them center right around the Daytona Beach area. And then we expect it to move up to Georgia. And then, of course, to South Carolina. Just talked to Nikki, uh, Governor Haley, and she's especially concerned about the Hilton Head and Charleston areas regarding the flooding. And I'll give you some updates there. I'm also very pleased to have my team here, uh, Frank Perry, Public Safety, DOT Secretary Nick Tennyson, Highway Patrol Commander Bill Gray, uh, National uh, General, uh, Guard General Greg Lusk, and of course Mike uh, Sprayberry, our Emergency Operations Director. Um, we also have, we have probably over 100 people that are working here throughout the night and have been here for a long period of time in the Raleigh location. Uh, yesterday, I, I visited uh, uh, Kinston, where it's the deployment point for many of our emergency operation trucks and other facilities. Those facilities are, uh, th those uh, trucks and other gear and boats are going to Elizabethtown, New Bern, and Williamston, uh, because we expect uh, issues in the northeast all the way down to the Southport area. So uh, those people are working very, very hard. By the way, we also just implemented a new software system due to some lessons learned in the deployment of Guard to uh, Charlotte a couple of weeks ago, where we have a better tracking system of where our Guards are throughout the state and even next door in South Carolina. And General Lusk is doing a great job in that area. Uh, the latest forecast for Hurricane Matthew, which we've heard, is constantly changing, and even the slightest change uh, causes us concern regarding the potential impact on North Carolina. And there have been some slight change, which uh, primarily are impacting increases in rainfall at this point in time. This slight shift northward, which has occurred overnight, will bring tropical uh, storm force winds slightly further inland, which do cause us concern due to flooding and also some possible um, power outages in those areas. Uh, rainfall accumulations have also increased, so we're getting amounts of rainfall primarily in the southeast uh, from 8 to 12 inches, but it could go as high as 15 inches. And I'll tell you, that's a lot of water, and it's very dangerous water, especially in low-lying areas, and I can't emphasize that more to citizens, especially in low-lying areas. We also can have um, plans of 4 to 7 inches more toward the northeast up to Greenville, uh, North Carolina and that area, as we said yesterday, is extremely saturated and uh, we're very concerned um, about some of the towns that have already been flooded in that area. Windsor, uh, North Carolina, which is still recovering from the floods from last week, if they get uh, this much rain, um, we're very concerned for not only the center of the town but the surrounding neighborhoods and a lot of the crops in that area. So um, I know the farmers have been working an awful lot during the past three days to get their crops up. Further inland, uh, rainfall of one to three inches is expected generally west of the US-1 corridor, three to seven inches east of US-1. Again, down trees are expected throughout any of these corridors because of the strong winds and saturated soils. Flooding is likely, especially on Saturday, when the, uh, the heavier rain will be coming, although much of the rain is starting tonight. Uh, also, we're making sure our dams are checked, that we're recently weakened from uh, heavy rain throughout the areas. Timing is still intact with this turn occurring early Sunday morning, but the heaviest rain and wind will be moving in starting Saturday. The greatest impact in North Carolina will be Saturday through Sunday morning. That's heavy rain, strong winds, storm surge, and very strong coastal impacts. Winds will be greatest across southeastern North Carolina, where winds of 45 to 50 miles an hour, but gusts up to 65 to 70 miles an hour. And I want to stress that, a gust of 65 to 75 miles an hour. And that's based upon the current model not changing at this point in time. The storm surge will be the highest with a high tide Friday night and early Saturday afternoon. Generally, a two to four feet surge is expected south of Surf City, 
Uh, two to five foot, uh, foot surge is expected mostly in the areas adjunct to the southern Pamlico Sound and the Noose Pamlico Rivers, which is very important to watch also. Hurricane Matthew will bring very large waves, dangerous surf, and rip currents, and the potential for significant beach erosion. High surf will re result in erosion and also isolated ocean overwash. The combination of isolated dune breaches, overwash, and sound side flooding could cause mostly isolated issues on portions of Highway 12, which we've seen many times uh, uh, on the Outer Banks and Ocracoke. Uh, what we're doing, some of the preparatory actions that we've taken, the State EOC transition to 24-hour operations now. And again, that's this operations that we're in here, right here. And we have over 100 people throughout this building. Uh, the operations is absolutely seamless and uh, great teamwork among a lot of volunteers, I might add. There are local swift water rescue teams in Brunswick, New Hanover, Onslow, Pitt, Wilson, Cumberland, and Craven counties. The state emergency response team has also deployed swift water rescue teams from Raleigh, Buncombe County, Henderson County to Elizabethtown, New Bern, and Williamston. We have uh, 60 North Carolina National Guard high water vehicles in staged in Laurenburg, Sanford, Elizabethtown, New Bern, and Williamston to be able to respond rapidly if this uh, con water continues to rise. When it starts, we have swift water rescue teams in reserve to deploy as the need arises. We have also sent, and I just got off the phone with uh, Governor Haley, uh, informing her that we have uh, provided two swift water rescue teams, two medical evacuation buses, a uh, helicopter rescue team, and also a liaison office to South Carolina today. And uh, Governor Harley was very appreciative of that. And uh, again, they're headed some, for some major, major flooding. Charleston typically gets flood when you're talking about this much water. And again, Hilton Head has some serious issues. Uh, Governor Scott, uh, I had a good conversation with him yesterday. Um, they have actually requested from North Carolina our mobile disaster hospital as uh, medical evac buses and as we can provide and we're looking at how we can get it down there. We actually don't want to get it down there in the middle of the storm. It's, it's, it's literally a lot of trailers that have to be hauled down to Florida, but we are evaluating that right now. We want to do everything we can because Florida had to evacuate a lot of hospitals, so, uh, but it'd be foolish to move it down during the storm especially with a lot of the evacuation traffic at this point in time. So we're evaluating the timing of how we can assist them. I also want to let you know, uh, uh, Secretary Tennyson has uh, removed all construction zones in I-95 because we're getting a lot of traffic on I-95 from evacuations from South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Uh, we had some, evac uh, some um, uh, construction zones uh, near Lumberton which we're holding up traffic. We've removed those construction zones in the last several hours. Again, our goal is to be overprepared and hopefully underwhelmed. We hope this model stays as it is, but any shift uh, can have a major impact, especially on rainfall and wind. And so we'll be watching it very closely. I'm especially concerned about power outages, and I cannot stress this more to the people, especially in the southeastern North Carolina. With these strong winds, there is a very strong likelihood that your power will go out. And this is not like any storm where the utilities, and, and I include many co-ops, by the way, and I want to especially thank the co-ops along the coastal area. You just assume they can get this thing turned on right away. Well, they're going to be overwhelmed, possibly, and, and other areas served by Duke Energy are going to be overwhelmed, and also South Carolina Electric. Um, so just don't assume because your power out, you're going to be priority uh, because these men and women uh, who are riding these trucks are going to have to make some tough decisions about where to go. And of course, a lot of these trucks are also in South Carolina. I used to do this. I, I used to climb poles. It's not an easy job, especially when there's a lot of wind and rain. I couldn't do it during normal conditions. So uh, please be concerned about those uh, men and women. And but. I cannot stress, if your power goes out, just don't assume it's going to be turned back on in the next 5 to 24 hours or even 72 hours. We could have prolonged power outages, or you should prepare for those prolonged power outages. Uh, so that's very, very important at this point in time. And I think people are, this is not just a North Carolina issue, this is a whole southeastern issue, which is, I'm sure, going to 
have a big impact on all the utilities, including co-ops, Duke, uh, Southern Company, and uh, South Carolina Electric and Gas. So uh, we're very concerned about them. Very quickly, at a briefing, uh, shelter briefing today, I want to let you know that uh, Onslow County, uh, there are no shelters or evacuations as, as of this morning. They are discussing voluntary evacuation at uh, North Top Cell at this point in time. Pender County, uh, no shelters or evaluate, value, uh, evacuation. They are discussing potential at Topsdale and Surf City voluntary evacuation as of this morning. New Hanover, um, same condition. Um, New Hanover EM is looking at their schedule. They're probably going to have a uh, meeting within the next hour to make some decisions regarding New Hanover County. They've got, of course, Carolina Beach, Wilmington Beaches, um, Figure Eight Island, a private beach, and several others. Um, Wilmington, UNCW, already mandatory evacuation is still in effect for the students at UNCW. In Brunswick County, which is our greatest concerns at this point in time because of a lot of low-lying areas, um, they have three shelters that are opening up today, North Brunswick High School, South Brunswick High School, West Brunswick High School. They do have a voluntary evacuations, especially for low-lying areas. Um, and that's very, very important. Bald Head Island, uh, mandatory evacuations for non-residents. Uh, Calabash, Carolina Shores, we haven't got an update. Cas uh, Caswell Beach, non-resident, mandatory evacuation. The same with Oak Island, non-resident, mandatory evacuation. We're still waiting to hear from Ocean Isle and Sunset Beach, but as governor, I wanna encourage them to make a call very quickly on what you think they need to do. It's your call. You're closest to the situation, but we want you to be mindset of our need to have resources available to uh, help with any traffic issues regarding um, evacuation. And again, each area is different because as you know, each beach and each community is set different regarding the angles on how the tides and the uh, currents may be hitting their beaches and impacting flooding. Each one has its own unique situation, and that's why we asked them to make the initial recommendations. Those teams are meeting now in each of those counties. They have the sheriffs, they have the county commissioners, they have the emergency personnel who will be making those decisions and making those recommendations to our this governor and the emergency response team, and then we'll move if they uh, want any mandatory evacuation. So with that, I'm very, very proud of our team, and we did want to give a little more extensive update this morning. Um, we just hope this thing moves out as quick as possible. Uh, my biggest fear right now is, uh, based upon our past experience in North Carolina, is things just stall and sit, um, or it moves more inland. Um, these things could shift. This thing could shift more out to the east, to the ocean, and there are some advantages of that. And there are some disadvantages of that, too. So we're looking at all the different models that could be impacting North Carolina. So with that, uh, we'll take a few questions that you might have. Can you talk about the, uh, the power outage <coughs> affecting the southeastern part of the state? So uh, we actually, I got a call from Duke Energy uh, overnight uh, saying to be prepared. So are you working then with Duke Energy? Yes. Or what can the average citizen do? The average citizen can be get prepared for a power outage. That'd be the smart thing to do, and recognize. Get your flashlights out. Uh, get your the proper food that's available that, that doesn't require refrigeration. If you're relying on a water pump to pump out water, you might want to get out of your house if if you don't have an energy backup generator. Um, so look at all the options. If you lose your power, what do you need right now? And especially if you lose your power for a long period of time, because <clears throat> I don't think Duke or any co-op right now could give, give a guarantee on when they could get the power back on, dependent upon what's happening um, in this huge swath of area. And by the way, this could be, you know, we tend to only think of the beach areas. Um, I'm, I'm as concerned or even more concerned about the inland areas, 10 to 20 to 40 miles inland. Uh, that's the history of North Carolina having major flooding issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'd like to thank the media for uh, continuing to give people advice on what they need to do and give them accurate information. We'll continue to give updates. If we need to give an update further on today, which we may do, uh, we'll do just that. Uh, everyone, please be safe and uh, don't do anything foolish, not only to risk your own life, but also to risk the life of, uh, 
of a first responder. That's what we don't want to have happen. So thank you very much. God bless you.